Hi guys, welcome back on the channel. In today's video, we're going to review Never Mind the Bill Hooks Rules Deluxe Edition Wargaming, Late Medieval, Small Battles, and Big Skirmishes by Andy Cullen. This is not the actual hard copy book you get uh, when you order the rules. This is my PDF version that I printed and I bind it. Um, obviously, the hard copy will come in better quality binding, and I'm sure the quality of pages will be uh, much higher resolution than mine. I prefer my rules in PDF because I like to have them in my laptop. I also like to print them wherever I want, scrabble on them and then print them clear again. So I always, when I have the option, order PDF. Now I have to say before I start, I read these rules extensively. I am very impressed. I also have to mention that um, it can very easily accommodate large battles, uh, not only small battles and big skirmishes. So uh, don't hesitate at all if you like big battles like I do and you know I like big battles purchase these rules. So let's start the flick through. Very nice painting here. So we start with the book, book content and introduction. And then you have the Albion, uh, the Wars of the Roses introduction of the history behind the Wars of the Roses. Very interesting read. I really enjoyed it. And then you have the core rules content. And um, uh, in this uh, boxes, these yellow boxes, I would suggest if you purchase the rules to read them, has very uh, interesting summary points and uh, very uh, specific uh, rules that uh, the authors consider critical. So it's a good addition to the rules. So we start. What you need uh, to play these rules? Here are the tokens that you're using. Um, different type tokens, moral tokens, uh, daunted tokens, uh, disarray tokens, etc. And then how you win a battle? Uh, you win a battle by killing the opposite commander, the command in chief. Uh, loss of morale and uh, if your opponent surrenders. Then you have army and unit organization. This is a very interesting part of the rules that um, you have very nice pictures here on the right side. So afterwards you go to army and unit organization. It talks about how the army is organized, uh, bands, companies. Here are the very nice photographs of examples so you can understand. A company of vouchers, for example, is 12 uh, individually based miniatures. That's how the author suggests you base on a movement tray. Um, from my experience, and you know I'm very experienced in rule reading and I've played most of the medieval rules, I have to say that uh, this rule set can be played with any type of basing. Usually when rules um, base their, uh, their mechanics on um, miniature removal, you can use the same number as a strength of a unit, have a small dice here in the side uh, to calculate uh, the strength you're losing, basically the miniatures that they are uh, being removed and uh, you can accommodate uh, any type of basing. What I like in this rule is that you have different formations, so you have two companies of men-at-arms in line formation, you can have two companies of, again, men-at-arms of billmen in block formation, uh, of course, you have your skirmish formation, and all this formation has advantages and disadvantages. Here you go to um, mixed blocks, where you have uh, mixed troops. For example, for the, in, in case of the Wars of the Roses, in the case of the Wars of the Roses, you have a mixed you, uh, group of billmen and um, archers. Here you have a squadron of knights. Knights are deployed in line uh, of uh, eight miniatures, a squadron of light uh, horse, and here you have um, a nice photograph of a 38-point ward. A ward basically is a battle. Uh, every army may have three battles or two battles or so wards. Now we have your points value. The points value are calculated per figure, but if you have um, some special characteristics like your veterans or your levy, you add or deduct points from uh, the whole unit. Then it's a very nice um, section about leaders and the role of the leaders. You have uh, leader classes. Uh, the classes basically um, dictate uh, how many orders you will give and how many dice you will roll in melee. Here is the preparation of battle and turn sequence. This is a very nice um, section of understanding the card decks. There are three decks, as you can see here. You have the bonus deck, you have the play deck, and you have the special events deck. The main deck is the bonus deck, is a play deck, where you have your commander uh, coat of arms, some bonus cards, and depending on the card you draw, sometimes you need to draw from the bonus deck, sometimes you have to draw from the special events deck. Now the turn sequence, uh, 
you start with the maneuver phase. Now, this is a very interesting phase. Why it's a very interesting phase? Because I haven't seen it anywhere in any other rule set. It's basically maneuvering your troops without many restrictions until the first shooting or the first hand-to-hand -hand combat occurs. As soon as the first hand-to-hand -hand combat or shooting occurs, then you go to the main battle phase where you start drawing cards and moving according to the sequence of the draw. Very interesting phase. See here you have orders and how do you give orders and the order tokens, you place them uh, beside the unit and you have leaders and order tokens, what the leaders can do, they can move themselves, they can mount and dismount, they can issue um, orders to uh, units within command range or if they are attached, they can rally units. Here is example of issuing or, uh, orders and the command range of six inches for commanders. Again, summary, very important. And these orders, when these orders are given, you can perform actions. One order means two actions. These actions can be performed um, in any uh, order and with almost with some restrictions, any combination. So here, for example, you can see the core rule action list. You have, you can move and that means attack or charge move. You can wheel, you can about face, you can shoot, you can rally, you can pack up, that has to do with artillery. And there are some special actions that you can do only one of them. You cannot combine them. We said in the previous ones, you can do two actions. For example, move twice or shoot twice or rally twice. But here, the special action, you can do only one of these actions. Here, very nice um, example with photographs. I like this. I would like more of these. I would like more of this of actions to be performed. For example, um, a typical wheel in all the rules. Uh, if you will, more than 30, 45 uh, de degrees, you um, become disarrayed. So some actions have as a consequence uh, to have to put a disarray marker uh, behind your unit, like a disorder. Movement, it's simple. Um, here you have the movements uh, or in good going and in bad going of all the units and the companies and uh, some building and woods information. Here you have movement penalties. As I said before, for example, if you wheel over 45 degrees during one action, you receive a disarray token. Obstacles, uh, field defenses of stakes, and another very interesting rule here. I don't know if you can see well, but I think I'm explaining okay. Another very interesting rule here is moving through friendly troops, something I'm missing from a lot of rule sets. I really like that the author included uh, interpenetration in his um, rule set. Movement summary. And then we go to shooting. Now, shooting is quite simple. Uh, you shoot uh, dice uh, according to the number of figures. Uh, if you are uh, disarrayed or daunted, you get reductions depending on, of course, the condition of your unit. Um, you can shoot twice. So, for example, um, a company of archers, it's, it's um, 12 miniatures, 12 strength, we can say, we're all 12 dice. Uh, if you decided to use two actions of shooting, you will roll 24. So they're devastating. But don't forget, and this is another thing that I haven't seen in many rules recently, although I remember I've seen it somewhere before, uh, archers can do this shooting uh, for, for a specific number of turns. They have supplies. Uh, you have a micro dice beside your unit at six, and wherever you shoot, you reduce to five, four, and when you reach zero, the archers cannot shoot anymore and can only you can only use them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So you have the shooting arc, it's a 45 degrees uh, uh, extending line from the side of the unit. And um, here you have the shooting ranges, uh, different ranges for different types of shooters. These are very nice photographs. The, the quality of the photograph is not good in PDF, I have to say. I'm sure it's going to be much, much better than the actual hard copy. Here you have saving throws. Depending on what type of unit you are and what type of armor you have, you have different saving throws. So if you have heavy, man at arms, you sh obviously you save with a better dice. If you have medium, like billman and pikemen, again, with the worst dice, infantry or totally without armor, it's more difficult. Shooting saving throws, adjustments, you have some adjustments depending on uh, some circumstances. And here is a very nice example of, of shooting. So let's read it uh, here for the archers. A company of archers at full strength rolls 12 dice. They can shoot twice in the turn, which would give them total 24 dice, hitting on a 6 at long range and plus 5 at a short range. So don't mess with archers unless they are low in arrows or you are heavily armored. So very nice example 
of uh, shooting. We have examples of skirmish shooting and shooting uh, a shootout between arrows. Then you go to melee. You have reactions. Depending on what unit you have, you can react to units attacking. You can, if you want, you can evade, uh, stand and fight, change your formation, uh, interpenetrate if you have a combi combined unit um, of archers and billmen or men at arms, um, or you can shoot uh, and then fight the melee if you are archer. Archers have some special rules here, very interesting. Eva explains the evading moves, leaders in melee, realists in melee, as I told you, add dice. Uh, as per their quality. When, uh, the, if they are injured in melee, they will lose one quality, they will lose one star, and this will reduce also their order's value, also their die, attack die value. So uh, a leader, while he's getting wounded, he deteriorates, but the, the leaders don't, are, not, are not killed automatically. So you have a, a, a exceptional rule here. Uh, rounds of melee. You have the first round of melee, and here is the mechanics and how it works. We also you have you know rare support pipe blocks. If you have rare support, you get uh, dice with the number of units in the front rank of your rare support. Cavalry and skirmishers. Then if your unit is disarrayed or daunted, this disorder I was telling you, disordered and double disordered, uh, you have half of these or you fight only with your front ranks so it's quite uh, interesting uh, rules of your first round of fight now you have your melee adjustments and then here you have your melee saving throws as i said um, again depending on your quality you save easily or more difficulty for example men at arms save with the plus three they have heavy armor and uh, for example levy archers with a six now remember that you have uh, three leader types so if uh, your leader is a hero, he gets three extra hits. If he's just a commander, two extra hits, and he's a dolt, one extra hit. Uh, just remember that the leader must be mounted to add extra hits to a cavalry unit. Then, as you said, we have your saving throws and applying casualty and kills. What I told you, the, the, the author talks about removing miniatures, obviously, as the mechanics are based on this, but very easily, as I told you, you just remove, not remove, you just deduct strength. Then leaders and how they may be injured and winning and losing melee, uh, follow-ups uh, and uh, continue melee. This is very interesting rules. There are melee reactions uh, and uh, the charging unit may follow up. So basically the pushbacks or if nothing happens, the melee continues. If the melee continues, now you have a second and a third round of melee where the units slowly, slowly are getting tired. So it's becoming more difficult for units in the second round of melee to hit and the third round of melee the same, more difficult. So this shows fatigue. Excellent rule. I really enjoyed it. After three rounds of melee, if the attacking unit hasn't broken the defending unit, and the attacking unit is bounced back. Very nice rule. Then you have flank and rear attacks. Very interesting rule. Um, because of the Wars of the Roses and this, uh, this rule set is based on the Wars of the Roses, um, if, you're, if, if a unit, if, if a company from another ward of the same army charges your opponent in the flank, you have to take a morale test because you don't know if it's charging you or if it's charging your opponent. You don't know because of the treachery of the era. Uh, if it charge you, if the charges is on the rear of your opponent, you have no problem. But when you see them charging them on the flanks, you're worried. You don't know what's happening. So um, it's very quite interesting. Look here again, a very a nice examples of of hand to hand combat and how it works. Um, the score adjustments, the hits, you can reroll ones and sixes. Uh, well, the ones, if you, depending on your quality, are the sixes again if you have a low quality unit. But these rerolls are not cannot take place in the second round or the third round of melee because of your fatigue and how you win the melee here. Then the morale when you should take a morale test when you lose a melee or when you, a leader is killed, or a friendly unit breaks 12 inches away from you, or if you are attacked in the flank, as we said. Um, some morale tests have to be taken uh, at the end, and some morale tests, as the ones I told you before, lost in melee, have to be taken immediately. So when you lose melee, you have to roll for morale and see what would be your reaction. Others have to be taken at the end of the turn. Again, as I told you, this orange page. Then you have the rerolls, as I told you, some veteran units reroll once, uh, some levy units reroll six because you hit with a plus four. Sometimes you hit with a plus five, depending on uh, the situation. And here you have the examples of disarray and daunted. 
uh, disarray is basically um, uh, disorder, daunted, let's say uh, double disorder and how you rally it off, how you rally, you have to bring a commander. Here is an example. Uh, both these units receive disarray token following melee. Uh, this unit is daunted. Its actions are severely restricted. Here, the unit's leader arrives to the right here, here and attempts to rally off its daunted tokens. As we said, if you're disarrayed or daunted, you get negative modifiers in shooting or in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, reduced dice. And here's the winning the battle and army morale tokens. How you win the battle? By killing your commander, by the commander or by uh, acquiring morale tokens from your opponent regarding situations. Simple, very simple. The deployment also is very nice. You, one, uh, you roll the dice and one player places the terrain and the other player decides, decides the, the side he will play. Very interesting. So here is Master in Fortress. This is an optional rule. Rather than simply choose your army, uh, as outlined in section four, the rules below provide more optional rules for setting up the game, uh, never mind the bill hooks. And summary of the new rules. So that's good for the new players. For the, for the old players, they can see uh, the addition of the new rules, uh, the extra rules that will be added from the old um, rule book. And I will go to the section of the different um, eras. So we have Gallia, the Hundred Years War, very interesting um, brief description of the era. Good read, I would say. And then um, war gaming potential, chevrachet, free companies, it gives you suggestions. And you go to theaters of conflict between Britain, Spain, uh, Spain British Isles, Flanders, and here Bill Hook Gallery. So there are special rules for, um, not extremely different, but special rules for the Hundred Years' War. So you have the units, uh, the companies, uh, the formations, the different formation. For example, now the addition is a Hearst formation where you have a unit of heavy infantry, men at arms in the center and longbowmen in the flanks. It counts as one in uh, as long as some uh, circumstances do not apply. So this is one new formation. Uh, you have obviously mixed block men at arms and spearman formation. Some new formations, very interesting for the Hundred Years War only. They're talking about cavalry formation, wards, uh, army troop uh, restrictions, uh, the English and the French, uh, free companies, Spanish, Flemish, and Scots, and others. And here we have troop quality. Troop quality is different in the Hundred Years War. You have rabble, levy, retinue, and veterans. You have four in uh, the core rule sets, uh, you had three. And here is a ward of 80 points uh, for longbowman, a leader, knights, men at arms, and uh, longbowman. I like these pictures. I wish they were better quality. Now you have the value points, uh, leaders, orders, and actions. Um, these are very close to the core rules, not major differences. And here again, a Gallia action list. You move, you will, about phase, shoot, rally, special actions uh, is as per the original. So uh, almost the same rule set. Here you have movement of skirmishers, shooting, some special rules for shooting, um, especially for the longbowman, melee, some special rules for melee, not huge differences. If you know the core rules, these are very simple. And then you have a morale and winning the battle. Now all the also after that you have very nice scenarios. I will use I will do this when I go home and I will do a battle report and specifically explain to you the rules. I will do this scenario but instead of free company I will use the English. And here we have the French. You have the objectives basically um, capturing uh, a baggage train. It's a really nice scenario. And there's another scenario, the Battle of St. Aubin's Bay, 1406. I don't know about this battle. If it is, um, I will read it afterwards. So when you finish with Gallia, you go to Bohemia, the Hussite War. Again, I'm not going to go into detail, the same thing, background, um, some information, uh, war gaming potential. And of course here uh, explains you special rules, uh, the leaders, um, action list, again, almost the same, I think, movement, shooting, some special rules probably for Hussites, um, melee and morale. And here you have a scenario uh, for uh, Bohemia. Then you have Helvetia, Swiss Burgundian Wars, again, the same rules, uh, special rules, um, action lists, shooting, melee, and here you have um, scenarios. Really nice rule set. I'm really impressed. You have Italian Wars, again, the same um, layouts with the rules, melee shooting, morale, 
uh, halberds and swordsmen. Some rules are different, obviously. And then the scenario uh, and the orders of battle that the author suggests. Then you have Northumbria, Anglo-Scottish border uh, rivers. It's very, very interesting. I haven't read this yet, but uh, again, organization. This is Second Scottish Wars of Independence. Um, Northumbria action list. Uh, the leaders, so there must be something different with the leaders. I haven't read this yet. And scenarios here you have the Scottish order of battle, you have the English order of battle. They have, um, they have northern nobles, it's quite good actually. And you have the objectives, it's quite interesting here. And then Lusitania, late medieval Portugal, again, the same special rules, actually, shooting melee and the scenarios. And you have Hibernia uh, for Ireland. I didn't know that. So, again, the same layouts um, you can have in the scenarios at the end. Now, painting, modeling, and uh, kit pacing. This is a very nice part of the rules. Painting introduction. It shows you and explains to you very nicely how to paint uh, for the Wars of the Roses, I can imagine. This is has clearly the steps. It's good for, um, I'm sure these are from expert painters, uh, working with green stuff, model introduction, that's good, that may help me actually. I need to improve my terrains, I need to stop my uh, painting armies and improve my terrains, it's very nice. Here you, I was telling you about um, the longbowmen that uh, have six uh, arrow barrages and uh, uh, then you have to uh, reduce the dice to five, four until it goes to zero, it's a very nice um, very nice place to put the dice, the die on. I, I have something similar back home. Uh, daunted markers. I have, I have markers like this, but not of that quality, obviously. Hidden ditch. It's very nice. Keep basing instructions, introduction. So it's also you have uh, basing. That's nice. That's a, that's a nice part of the room. Now here, cards, quoking, tokens, a quick reference sheet. So see here you have your cards, where you can print them and uh, the, the, you can print them and cut them and use them. So here you have the bonus deck, as I told you, but everything is based on the play deck. So the play deck has skirmish, skirmish. It will have your leaders. It depends on how many you will have. You write down on how many stars. If it's two stars, you will cross the three star, and then you have bonus. Um, you put, you place them uh, without obviously the other way around, and uh, whoever leader comes out, you uh, use him to move or to give orders. When the bonus cards comes, sometimes you have something to take from a bonus deck, and also this is when uh, you start the hand-to-hand -hand combat. So when hand-to-hand -hand combat finishes, when you will start in the next round, you will start when this card uh, appears in um, on the deck. Always one card is not turned, so. As the author says, hopefully it's not your leader. So these are um, examples for leaders. You can print them. Uh, I can made. I made them my own, but uh, I haven't printed them yet. Uh, you have French leaders, so you have leaders for Gallia, Bohemia, uh, Helvetia, Northumbria. So you have Gallia here, Gallia here, English and French. Um, you print three and three, or two and two, depending on your armies. You cross the three, and you put two for your lesser commanders, and you put a name if you want. And when this card is drawn, you give orders. So you have for a lot of theatres of war. And here you have your special event cards. You have the core rules, that's nine cards. And then depending on the era, you're going to fight. For example, if you fight in Wars of the Roses, you, you cut three Albion ones. If you want to go for um, the French, you go for Gallia, for the Hundred Years War, and so on and so forth. These are specialized for the theatre of war. And here is uh, here are the tokens. Uh, Obviously, if you want to fight uh, Wars of the Roses, you have uh, orders uh, of Yorkist and Lancastrians. And here you have um, a generic for Europe, so you can use for French. Um, Army morale, disarray, that's disorder, daunted, double disorder, and uh, daunted, this is daunted uh, in uh, England, and this is daunted in Europe. These you can print yourself, you can print your own if you want, it's very easy to make that. Now we have the quick reference sheet, quick reference sheet for every period, for all these periods. Now, here is my own complaint of the rules. I understand that if the quick reference sheet leaks out, um, 
people may think that I can play the rules from the Duke reference sheet. Sometimes it happens, but this is very generic. I would suggest to, uh, I can do it myself and I will do it uh, for uh, the teams, the author to prepare more detailed quick reference sheet. This quick reference sheet has the points, the movement and the charge, uh, the shooting, uh, distance and how much you need to hit, uh, how many dice per figure, saving throws, save melee and some notes. But you know, regarding morale tests, when you have to take immediately, when you have to take in the end of the turn, and there's a lot of things that they would be very helpful in a quick reference sheet. And I think this is where the game needs to improve. You can have the quick reference sheet included in uh, the purchase of the game. Uh, but I think quick reference sheet is quite weak. I mean, you can help it. Um, maybe because I don't know the rules totally by heart, I find that I require more help, but yet generally speaking, quick reference sheet should have more stuff, like the, like the sequence, uh, when you have to roll for, um, when you become daunted, when you become disarrayed, things like this. Anyway, this is from me, guys. I have to say, closing, that this is exceptional good rule set from someone who knows the medieval era, Believe me, I'm an expert in rules and I know. I'm going to use this rule. I'm going to fight a battle report when I go back home in a couple of weeks with my large armies. But I will uh, show you mechanics with my small 15 mm's and 10 mm's. I checked the round, they work very well, especially DBX basing with four works perfectly. And if you add them together, you can have a company of four DBX bases and they, and they look really good. I uh, hope you enjoyed this um, uh, review. Uh, I highly recommend the rules. They're really good. And um, as I told you, I will uh, do a mechanics, if you want, uh, video um, with my 15mm's uh, very soon. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Um, I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. Um,